Okay, I think we're ready to rock. Hi, I'm Sasha. And I'm Dahi. This is DNA Slot Cars, and we are going to be doing a podcast with Rob from the Daily Own. Born, Born to, to run, run, baby. Born, Born to, to run. run. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Well, thanks, guys. I, I was kind of excited about this when you first uh, presented the opportunity because this will be my first uh, actual, I guess we call it podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, we were too, Rob, and um, we were keen to, obviously, we met with you and, and got on well with you, you know, over in at Electric Dreams at the Nationals. And actually, Pete um, from Track Fans was the one who got us into this. Yeah. He invited us on to do a podcast with him. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we really had a good time, really enjoyed it. And we ended up then on um, Raul's live stream on a Monday. And we decided, you know what, let's let's do a few of these. We did. We recorded one um, earlier in the week, which is going to be an interesting one. Um, Rob, this will come out after that. But we did it with uh, Jim Cunningham, who designs the Omni Slotbox. So that's oh, that would be cool. Pretty that cool. Be cool. Um, yeah. So we're doing it. Wanted to do a few, and, and especially with with people that we uh, we know and obviously enjoy their channels as well. And obviously, you fit that bill. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much. I really enjoyed the interview you did with Alan Smith. That was pretty interesting. Um, so as soon as I saw that, I decided, well, you know what? I've never yeah. purchased anything. I didn't know that he was there. So I went to the website and I, I found the perfect car that I've been looking for, and he had he actually had awesome. it. So I was really excited about that. Yeah, it's uh, Alan is absolutely superb, you know, isn't he, Sasha? He, yeah. I mean, he really looks after us well, and he's, you know, obviously main distributor for North America for Revo Slot and for BRM, yeah. and obviously he carries a lot of other areas as well. And um, yeah, just really cool. So we've been doing a little bits and pieces with him, and that will be continuing um, moving forward in a. A little bit uh, even more so that's mm -hmm. that's cool and it's really it, just a mind of information you know and the history about how you know he basically s uh, sold his business to scale electric you know usa so oh yeah. really yeah so he's he's really started scale electric usa um wow. yeah so it's super cool yeah. so what do you think sash do you want to get uh, fired up with a few questions for rob so what part of the U.S. do you live in? So I live in the, I would call it the West, I guess you can call it the West Coast area, but I live in Central California. And originally I lived in San Gabriel Valley, which is a, it's kind of like a suburb of Los Angeles. Yeah. Probably like maybe half an hour from Los Angeles, just to the East. I grew up there. And uh, I lived there probably till I was maybe 36 years old. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I went to school there. Um, and it was, a, it was a really interesting little town to grow up in because uh, it was very, very quiet. It was a little unincorporated town called Roland Heights. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was just, it was an amazing childhood to grow up there. But yeah. the town eventually got really, really populated as people found out about it. Mm. I moved out in 2004 and I moved up here to the Central Valley, which is okay. called, they call it Kern County. And I, my, my family, my mom was born in this area mm -hmm. and she moved to LA when she graduated high school. And so that mm. I kind of moved back here. And then eventually my parents, they had moved here as well to watch uh to watch uh, uh our kids and to you know to basically sure. live the second part of their life mm. and so uh i enjoy it here it, it kind of has a small town feel mm. um but as probably as where you live it's very very uh the weather is very difficult to get along with sometimes it's really hot or it's really cold yeah yeah it's it's mainly really hot here <laughs> we have had oh my god such a, a hot summer here i mean it's only honestly only in the last week that our temperatures have gone down under 90. um so we were sitting up well over 100 pretty much for the last six months um mm. and it's it's actually funny enough 
the pool now um i like i like it to be refreshing you know and but it's a little bit on the cold side for sasha now isn't it yeah i'm like oh when i get in there <laughs> yeah i about a year ago i bought a swim spa it's a 16 foot swim spa yeah so i'm oh. able to adjust the temperature so mm. I can get in it right now and the water's probably 92 degrees, yeah. but when you get out, it's horrible because it's cold <laughs> outside now. It's cold, yeah. but you uh, know, that's the human yeah. condition, Rob, the human condition is an Irish people are very guilty of it. We're never happy unless we're talking about the weather or complaining about the weather. <laughs> my, my wife is of Irish descent and yeah, she, yeah. she wants, she wants to take a, a trip one day to Ireland um, to go see what it's like. She, her, her maiden name was Browning. Ah, so, okay, cool. Uh, so one of these days we'll, we'll head out there and, and we'll get to see that. Maybe, hopefully I'm not too old by then <laughs> to enjoy now, it. I'll tell you what, you're never too old to visit Ireland. It's, uh, yeah, you should, you should definitely visit. It's, it's a good place. Um, mm -hmm. nice, good fun. You know, we don't take ourselves too seriously. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, all right, Sash, what have you got next on the go? How did you get into slot cars? Well, that's kind of a question that a lot of people have a similar answer to. Mm. So I, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, and, and I was uh, probably introduced to my first slot car track when I was five years old. It was an electric power track by uh -huh. the name of, uh, it was called an Eldon. Eldon. Um, okay. It was an Eldon track, and it came with two little dune buggies kind of similar to what you see right here. This is a Hot Wheel version. Let me see if I can show you that. But it came with two uh, yeah. cars like this. Yeah. And I played with that for a long time. Mm. As a matter of fact, I just found that track as I'm cleaning up my mom's house. Mm. And it's missing the cars. I don't know where they're at, but the track is there. Yeah. And so I played with that for a while. Mm. And then um, about the early 80s, we got into Tyco. And we had a we had yeah. a track set called Command Control. So these were the cars that did not have slots. They were able to change lanes back and forth. Right. And and I absolutely yeah. loved that set. And it had the glow in the dark rails, and it had the glow in the dark flags and stuff. So we'd set that mm. stuff on our floor, and we played with it all the time. And I we just mm. left it there. We didn't have to take it down and stuff. And 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 I was buying little cars back then. And my favorite car was the 1978 iroc camaro that was ah. like, that was my yeah. favorite so we played with that for a while mm. and then as most things happen you sort of get pulled out of that mm. and we started playing what we call now retro video games because yep. now they're you know they're they were little dots back on the screen back then they were they're not like what you see now and um we we basically put the track away probably i don't think we ever pulled it out again mm. and it took us from all the way till the mid 90s when i was driving around one day in my little town and we found that there was this commercial slot track right and so with the commercial slot track um a buddy of mine went in there and we, we were well, what is this what's going on we didn't know what that kind of racing was and mm. so we we saw these cars and they kind of look similar to this here. So they were the, the metal chassis cars yeah. with the Lexan body. Okay. Yeah. And we bought some and we played with them for a while. Mm -hmm. And then as most things go, the track closed down. Yeah. I hadn't discovered another track till a little bit later that was in Buena Park. Mm. And, and by then it was, I had all kinds of other stuff going on. And so I left it for a while. Yeah. Now we moved to the, early 2000s i think about 2000 maybe 7 2008 uh -huh. i i bought another little set and it was called anki drive i don't know if you're yeah. familiar with anki drive no no i've not heard of that no so it, it it was it was a tech startup that created this this sort of technologically advanced racing system and you put together these these vinyl track pieces. You put them on the floor. All right. And the, little, the little cars have cameras on them, okay. and you operate them with your with your smartphone, or you can operate them with an app uh, right. on your tablet. And so my kids really got into that, 
And what was cool is that you can shoot your opponent with these virtual missiles or maybe leave an oil slick behind you. And then they hit it, the car spins out. Like Mario Kart in a way. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But but the cars know where they're at on the track, so there was no need for rails or anything like that. Okay. And eventually, uh, we were going to expand. We were going to get some of the trucks they had and stuff, and then the company went out of business. Uh, so we put that away. Mm. Years later, 2018, uh, I started uh, playing with a band with my, okay. uh, with my buddy Joe, Mm -hmm. um, I, I answered an ad in um, Craigslist because I'm a bass mm -hmm. player. Ah, cool. And we practiced for about two years, and neither of us knew that we were into slot cars previously. <laughs> and, and then one day, I'm going through his garage with him, and he says, oh, by the way, did you see this? And I, I saw he had an old, I don't know if it was an Eldon or if it was another brand, but he had an old slot car that he pulled out. And I said, I have a slot car. Right. And I, I went into my shed and I pulled out my old little slot car. We started talking about them. And he started showing me his collection that he had. And they'd just been in boxes for 20 years. He'd never touched yeah. them. That's when it started. Uh, okay. And I started looking into it. And then, ironically, I found a track had opened up in my hometown here in, in Bakersfield. Uh -huh. But they raced, they raced these 124 scale flexi cars. They didn't race the, the okay. small ones. Yeah. So we got into that for a while. We we played with those cars, and then I got into the drag racing, and I did drag uh -huh. racing. I built that little Herbie car. I don't know if you saw that Herbie, but it was a little VW Bug, but it was based on a New Beetle. Cool. And I won one of the major races, and uh -huh. with that winning, I bought the track you see back here. I bought the beginnings of my Carrera track. Nice. And then, as you know, it's a down it's a downhill slide from there. It's it's and, like uh, it's like that uh, Alice in Wonderland, isn't it? Huh. You know, when you go into that, the, the rabbit hole was very very inviting, and we just jumped into it, and so now we're yeah. in it with both feet. You know. Yeah, and I exactly, and that's I think part of the next question Sasha's got. Why did you decide to start a channel? And we really love your channel. We're born to run. Where are you born to run? run. Where are you born, born to run? To run. <laughs> I, I started a channel in November of 2022. Uh -huh. um, originally, um, I had another channel a long time ago, and I did some filming of my RC stuff. And yeah. I and that channel was just all over the place. I did I went to car shows, uh -huh. RC stuff, and and I also ran a VW club back in. I ran a club from 2013 to 20 well it's still going on today but i left the club four years after i started it interesting and uh as a matter of fact let me grab this right here i'll show you yeah we were kind of we were kind of uh i'm not gonna say famous but we were in a magazine god that's cool we were in a magazine and there where right there i am right there I don't know why we looked all angry. We we're all upset for some reason. <laughs> but uh, so this was a VW club, and I've always been into mm -hmm. Volkswagens yeah. ever since the, the 1980s. Mm. So I started uh, building the track, and I decided I'm going to start a new channel, and I'm just going to document our racing, document, whatever I have to do with the slot cars. And so yeah. I named it the slot car raceway. And then I used my name, obviously, because we had seen the movie Need for Speed. And yeah. I thought that that's perfect. And mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to use that as yeah. long as they allow me to use it. The day they say don't use it anymore, then I'll make my own version. But yeah. for now it's it's been used. Yeah. No, that's that's uh, pretty cool. It's always interesting to see how people get in. Actually, my uh, VW is, I, we're big into cars, you know, my first car was a, a Mark II Volkswagen Golf GTI, <laughs> actually, mm, mm. Uh, back in Ireland, yeah. unfortunately, it got stolen and used in a bank robbery. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> wow, that's, <laughs> you know, that's pretty wild. The worst part yeah. about that, it, it actually, okay, the car, you know, stealing the car, and obviously, I loved it, but 
The worst part was is they took all my CDs. I had a, a good CD collection in the car, and they took all of those. And I'm like, that that was almost the worst bit, you know. Oh man, you know, music. Yeah. Is, you know, music is something that's uh, even more than a card. You know what I mean? It's especially when you've you've got uh, favorite albums. But yeah, such is life, I guess. Um, and next question I might ask actually. So what's what's next for the Daily Own Slot Car Raceway? What's what are your plans? Because you've well, done that... you've done well, and I mean, let's talk a little bit about that recent uh, video, your trip to Electric Dreams, and the you know our slot cars back because that that really was I haven't seen a, a video on slot cars do that well. Um, and isn't that weird? How I don't know what that video did or why mm. it became so popular and um uh, and the funny thing is i i look at the analytics of that video and obviously th we have a small group of of core slot car youtubers that we yeah. know but that video for some reason was seen 95 percent of the views were from non-subscribers yeah and i i don't know if they've ever come back but i don't i can't put my finger on what that video mm. had that made it so widely seen yeah because believe me if i knew what that was i'd be able to copy it again but i don't know what it is yeah it's it's interesting you know um we were talking about it and um you know I, let's be honest you know that the the slot car hobby is relatively niche you know and but that transcended that that video got to other people um we did a couple of shorts right recently and one of them funnily enough is it was just a random thing that we put up for fun. Sasha has the Robosan Optimus Prime, right? Which is an amazing thing. I'm just I, this I I saw that. I yeah. saw that. We put that up, right? And it, you know, three thousand views overnight, and it's, you know, which is is funny. Then we did one. I don't know if you saw the one with Sasha doing the Hot Wheels Drag Race. I did see that one. That's nearly at eight thousand views, you know. And again it's is is hot wheels i suppose slot cars are more niche than hot wheels but it's funny how certain videos uh are shared more or are picked up or even shown to people more you know mm -hmm. and that's and how you i don't know yeah what was the secret recipe for that one it was great video but it's there was something there i don't know whether it was some of the keywords you used or something that just got um it started to become shared and shown to people and the algorithms liked it definitely yeah 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 i believe me i have no idea what that could have been caused from when something because sometimes you think you've done a really good video and it and it's yeah. got wide mass appeal and then it just flops it doesn't do anything yeah and then you do a little quickie video somewhere and you maybe just tag it correctly and it just blows up and you're like, what's going on? I don't understand. Yeah. But Hot Wheels do have a very, very um, large following. And, mm. and I've been a, I've been a Hot Wheel collector since 1974. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, and you ask what what's in the future for my channel. Mm. And mm. I'm kind of filling it out right now. Um before I did the slot car thing, I actually started to do Hot Wheel videos and they're on okay. my other mm -hmm. channel, but they didn't really, I didn't know what I was doing. I just filmed them. Mm -hmm. And what I had done is I had built a 24 foot long track, a, dr okay. uh, a drag strip track. Nice. And I would take that to our club meetings and we would race Hot Wheels. But the yeah. prerequisite is you had to have, you can only race a, a Volkswagen Hot Wheel. Okay. And, uh, and then I would have prizes for the winners at the end and stuff like that. Um, and then when we'd go on family trips, I'd bring the track with me and we would race. Mm. And and I and I had found somebody who'd made a, a 3D printed digital um, finish gate so that tells you digitally who's won the race. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking that some of the direction I want to go is both to maybe display the hot wheel collections i have mm -hmm. I, I probably have about i'm going to say this i don't know for sure but i probably have about ten thousand hot wheels that i've collected Ten thousand. wow I, and so what i wanted to do 
because I haven't seen a lot of these cars probably in 20 years. Yeah. I wanted to open up some of these cases and get a look at them because they're going to be kind of new to me again, just mm. as they are to the audience. Cause I haven't seen them for years. Um, I was setting up actually my hot wheels right here, my Volkswagens, because mm. I was going to do a video on something like that. Yeah. But, cool. So I think the hot wheels is probably my next sort of, transition uh -huh. and, if, and if that gets any traction i might do its own separate channel yeah and as well as the rc stuff i've been an rc collector for probably since the 1980s and yeah, I, used to, okay. I used to work in the hobby industry nice and um i've done the airplanes and the helicopters yep. and the uh -huh. boats and the cars and i and i probably have maybe about 50, 50 RCs to my collection right now. That's cool. Well, we actually got, uh, Sasha got a, a Traxxas uh, Bigfoot, and I have a Lassie LMT Gravedigger uh, that we have a bit of fun with. Though, although it was being so hot, last weekend is the first weekend we got them out. Um, so we have a bit of fun with that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, I, I love monster trucks. I don't know if you've seen the the newest monster truck I got. It's on my track, um, but because oh. it's not licensed, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a small 124 scale. It's not licensed, so it comes with decals that don't look like Bigfoot. Yeah. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to design Bigfoot decals for it. Nice. And then that'll have kind of a permanent place on my track. That's and, cool. Uh, I, I love monster trucks. I, I, I uh, In fact, here's a, here's a good little story. Mm-hmm. Back in the early 80s, there was a movie that came out called Take This Job and Shove It. Do you okay. remember that movie? Yes, yes. So in that movie, and I don't think it was a really good movie per se, but it was a movie that just came out. And that was the first movie that featured um, the Bigfoot monster truck. And it looked much different than, than, than it does now. Yeah, you definitely. Know, it was actually a regular pickup truck <laughs> chassis. Yep. with tractor tires on it yeah and in that movie it featured the monster truck basically crushing the cars at a dealership mm. when that movie came out they brought the monster truck to la to los angeles and they brought it to the los angeles forum yeah for everybody to come and see and my dad took us and we were sitting there and we we looked at this truck and we've never seen anything like this i mean yeah. this is completely amazing and we were fans from the get-go so yeah. i grew up with the monster trucks i went to dozens of monster truck rallies over mm. the years i got my son my son was a big monster truck fan cool and so so we have he he has a grave digger over here nice and and i have a son of the grave digger and those are axials they're not the low c's but they're the yeah. axial versions yeah and so, yeah, we we love monster trucks, man. It's just Those, it's just a it's just a weird, over the top American pastime. We uh, as kids, we used to watch monster truck highlights um, whenever we could, and it was generally it was on a, I think a Friday night they used to do it, and we were obsessed with it. But we never had much access, mm -hmm. and we really want to go to. Um, it's funny now you've got to go to one or the other so you have to go to monster jam if you want to see gravedigger and you have to go to the hot wheels versions of the event to see bigfoot now i think there's some licensing or you'll know more than we do but those lossy lmts they're animals <laughs> i followed the original debut of that truck and i i so wanted to get when the price range was just really high at the point yeah. I might get one eventually at some point. Um, now, have you ever been to one of the RC expos where they do monster truck racing? No. And we were looking at, I'll tell you what, what we were looking at recently is, do you know, have you seen that company uh, based over on the East Coast and they've done the Raminator and the, mm -hmm. uh, the Primal RC, that's it. Primal RC, yes. I, yep. I've seen that video that RC Sparks did with the Raminator. Not going to lie to you, I was very, very close to trying. I had to convince myself that I did not need that big uh, grave digger. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's huge. It takes up a lot of room. Um, I just 
I just purchased a Traxxas UDR. I'm sure ah, you know what that is. Yes, yeah. And that's a pretty big truck. That's a it takes up a lot of space. I have it. If you ever look at my races, you'll see it on the track. Yeah. But back in the early 2000s, and before I got married, I had bought the Traxxas um, T Max. They mm -hmm. called it back then. Yeah. And I went completely out of control with that truck, and All I right. changed it out. Mm -hmm. By the time I finished with it. I had about three thousand dollars into that truck. <laughs> it's probably it's probably worth a hundred bucks today, <laughs> but it's all aluminum and it became yeah. so heavy that every time I jumped it, I'd bend shock shafts yeah. and all kinds of stuff. But that's, yeah, it's, problem, that's a it? that's a fun hobby just as well. It is, isn't it? It is. Um, what's your next? Have you got another question there? Sash? What's your favorite slot car brand? Ah, God, that's a difficult question to that's, ask. That's tough, isn't it? It is tough. Now, for aesthetic reasons, I would have to say Fly is probably my favorite slot car brand. So in, in that case, I would say something like this, something like this Porsche here. That's a beauty, that is. And and, and I and I love 934s. Mm. And aesthetically, I like this. I know mm. that this car doesn't run yeah. as well as this one here. Yeah. So when it comes to overall brands, I think Revo slot is probably my favorite. It just has a tangible feeling with it because of the chassis. It just feels like it's something. Is that uh, one? Is that the car you got in from Alan, or was it something else you got, Rob? I got from Alan. I got this one. I'll show you. Cool. Let's see here. Got to go into my little my toolbox. And so I got two cars from Ellen. Actually, I got ah, nice. I got this one here, obviously. Ah, that's cool. <laughs> and I and, and I and I I have a story about the Batmobile too, if you want to hear it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but this is also the one I got from Ellen, and and this was a Viper. Very nice. That I had been looking for for years. Mm. I didn't know. Like again, I didn't know that Ellen even. I didn't yeah. know his shop existed. But I'm an Xbox player. Yeah. And I was a PlayStation player and everybody has the PlayStation livery. But when I saw this one, I said, okay, that's perfect. It's got Very golf nice. and yeah. Xbox and it's a Viper. It's, it's, it's a win-win. That's been in our shopping cart. Actually, it probably still is in the shopping cart there. I was, <laughs> we were tempted. <laughs> yeah. And, and I have not put this on the track yet. That's how okay. busy I've been. So yeah. it just, it just kind of sits for now. Yes. Yeah, cool. So, so I would, Say Revo slots probably my favorite brand for now. Yeah, I mean from from our side, I you know we always love we always love the Carrera stuff. You know we started with, and mm -hmm. I mean you like the Carrera, don't you, Sash? Yeah, I like Carrera. They're, they're robust. You know the detail's very good, and it's very hard to beat the price point. I mean, you know you can get a, a digital car which has a twenty five dollar chip in it. For 50 mm -hmm. bucks, you know. <laughs> so we'll probably always um, collect, you know, Carrera on the side as well. But our favorite brands now are definitely BRM, uh, Revo Slots. Again, Revo Slots, the smaller brother of BRM. And um, we do like our slots too, don't we? Yeah. And there's so many with Thunder Slots, all that kind of stuff. And we've got we've gotten to the point now where we've got, a lot of cars and it's hard to even get around to to drive half them you know yeah yeah i i would have to say that when i started off carrera was my favorite brand mm. um and i have i have quite a few carreras as well yeah and i uh was probably really back into digital at that point when we started mm -hmm. out and, and we were having a good time with it yeah um but then we realized that staying digital, we were kind of having a lot of difficulty in trying to digitize cars that maybe didn't fit a chip correctly. Yeah. Maybe they didn't, they didn't have any chassis area to put a chip in there. Mm. So we started moving towards the analog stuff. Yeah. And so I was digitizing cars left and right, and I still have them in here. Mm. Slowly, I've been taking those digital chips out. Yeah. So I can run them analog if i go to electric dreams or something but the nice thing about the carrera is, is you just have to flip the switch and do the trigger thing and you basically run that car analog no problem 
It's handy. And have you got a, um, so are you using a switcher of any kind on your layout or are you still just running purely digital or? I have the tech slot box. Okay. How are you finding that? I, I really enjoy it. Yeah. I, I love the simplicity of mm -hmm. that. I haven't tried any other um, analog digital converters, Yeah. but uh, it's very simple to use. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of things that I would like to add, mm. um, and I haven't gotten to those things yet. Like the like Marty's, uh, you know, his his box that he made to run yeah. the analog controllers. Yeah. Because I I have the Defalco three hundred four, mm. and I just I absolutely love that controller. It is yeah. so smooth. Yeah. And there's a little bit of a learning curve when I'm doing this all the time at home and I go to electric dreams and I have to do this. It's just kind of yeah. like this thing you have to kind of work out in your head. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I could hook up my analog controllers to this track and run yeah. analog and digital, that'd yeah. be the best of both worlds. That's uh, I think this, uh, I'll hopefully we'll have this podcast that we did with Jim Cunningham out um, and Rodney, his business partner. Mm -hmm. maybe in the next couple of days, uh, next day or so. That will be an interesting one for you to look at. Um, yeah. They've they've actually got three products on the market now, which I didn't even know. They've got the all bells and whistles that we have, mm -hmm. um, full, full bore, omni slot box. Then they've got the XMR, which is similar, smaller, without the readouts. But then they've also now come up with one called the emulator, which is more based around the uh, plug and play nature of, we'll say similar to a tech slot, mm -hmm. but the benefit about it is, is it comes with a modified control unit and it has inbuilt protection. So you're not going to fry the chips. So that will be, oh, uh, okay. Keep an eye out for that one. That, that might be interesting for you. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it interesting how, and, and I don't know what your take is on it, but it seemed that, all of these things just started popping up recently. Yeah. Slot cars seemed, if I look back a little bit, they were kind of having a steady go. Everybody was kind of doing the same thing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like all this technology is now appearing. It's great. And it's, it's really turning it into something that is much more than we ever dreamed it could be. You yeah. know, especially if I look back in the, nine, the 90s when I was mm. getting into it. It's no, definitely. I agree 100%. Even Sasha, what do you think? Since you started even into it, and really only you started into it last uh, December, and even in that space of time, look at all the new stuff that's coming out. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it is a good time to be into this hobby yeah. right now. It's probably better than ever. And as, as much as I say, Revo Slot's my favorite brand, when they come out with that 510, whenever they do that that's really going to be my favorite brand. Well, watch watch this sp space actually Rob on um, on we're going to be hopefully going to be able to do soon some reviews on some of these kind of cars before they're available. So that's going to be exciting stuff. So mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty cool, that's huh? Sounds, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Um, what have you got next on the list, Sash? So, can you show us some of your favorite cars? I can. So besides the Porsches, and I have an entire drawer of Porsches, but this one was kind of special to me here. Um, ever since I was a kid, uh, Stratus, I always was a fan of this car here. Mm -hmm. I remember back in the, I'm going to say the early 80s, my, my dad had bought my brother and I Lancia Stratus radio control cars, and they were kind of weird, though. It was kind of before RC really was big. Yeah. And they didn't have a braking system or a speed control. So you turned them on and they just went and you just right. had to steer them around. Yeah. And so I was infatuated with the Lancia mm. just because it was just so foreign to us Americans, how this car looked. And so I was looking at these cars here and I've just always had a, a fascination with them. I remember so, it from Sega Rally. Uh, I used to love the Lancia Stratus in uh, the Sega Rally. I, I very much enjoyed that game. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, it was always one of those cars I picked whenever I was playing games. It was a Lancia Stratus. Yeah. It was a car I had to save up and buy. And so um, other than the Porsches, I would have to say, well, 
this car is a horribly running car, but I just, I still love it. <laughs> That's cool. Very I still cool. love it. Yeah. And so I've worked really? on this car to try to make it a little better. Great paint job. Great paint job on that. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, and I've got a couple of these hippie cars mm -hmm. and, um, and if I look in my other drawer, this one has been one of my favorites. I don't know if you ever saw the race we did with the Chaparral. Chaparral, yeah, that's cool. But this car is just a beast on the track, and it's some amazing how fast it is. It is that a slotted, this, Rob? This is this is a slotted. This is yeah. the two F. Mm -hmm. And then we did a race, so I think with a two E. Okay. I think it was a two E, and that was an MRRC. Yeah. And so that's one of my favorites. Cool. And I would have to say another one is this one here. This one I had to buy used because by the time I found out about this Ferrari. That's a beaut. Um, this one was not available. Is that the and magnetic uh, rear spoiler? It is. It's, oh, it's yeah. yeah, it just pops right off. We need that. Yeah. And it works, <laughs> it works, it works nice. And yeah. I wish more of these spoilers were like that because how many times you take your car out and you hit one wall and that's it spoilers gone we uh funny actually the other night um my other daughter elisa she's a bit older and um she was racing with sasha and what car did I give her i gave her a, a new app it was just we had gotten one of the carrera uh, mustang gty's and first lap and the, the spoiler was gone you know so yeah. But it's ideal that magnetic uh, approach because you can just tip yeah. it on, tip it off. Yeah, the GTY is uh, that's a fun car to drive. The GTI, the GTY. I have the white one with the seventy six on the side. Yeah, I I uh, I really love the Shelby uh, Mustangs. You know, I mm -hmm. I actually test drove a GT five hundred last November. Mm -hmm. I was very tempted, but the price in the cars were so crazy through after COVID. I didn't. Um, but yeah, it seems to be a bit fun on the track, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Cool. It was in, in 1964 and a half. Yeah. My mom had purchased her first car and it was mm -hmm. a it was a Mustang fastback uh, nice. 1964 and a half. My dad eventually got it. He he took it over and then my brother has it now. So very um, nice. Yeah. So that that's we have a long history with the Mustangs. That would be cool, actually. If you can, uh, maybe, if you didn't mind sending me a picture, that'd be good to. I'll pop it up on the uh, pop it up on the video. That'd yeah, yeah. Cool. I, I I think I had a picture I took uh, when I did the my backstory video. But yeah, yeah. nice. No, that'd be cool. Very cool. And do you have an interest in real cars, by the way? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do. I do. I have. Yeah. I have two cars. Uh, actually, I have three cars. I have a a two thousand New Beetle. Mm -hmm. I bought, and it was a, it was the turbo version. Yeah, and uh, I still have that car. And then I have two Volkswagens just on the other side of this camera here, mm -hmm. and both are in sort of a disrepair a little bit. I have one of them on jack stands. I was putting disc brakes on it. It's a nineteen fifty nine Bug. Ah, cool. And and that one I usually have a couple of pictures and some of the videos that I do. That was my, I bought that car mm. actually because for a few years I became a meter reader and I needed something that was cheap on gas. Okay. And I already had another bug and I had sold that. It was a 1972 uh -huh. and it was a car I took to the car shows a lot. Yeah. I sold that. And then I found another bug. I found a 1955 uh -huh. and I built that one to drag race. Yeah. And okay. so, so the 55 and the 59 are just on this side of this camera. Cool. Uh, yeah. Yourself and Marty have plenty in common then with your, your love of bugs. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I have Volkswagens and, and I, I think eventually I'm probably going to sell them. Mm -hmm. and get my dream car which is probably going to be a porsche i i don't yeah. i don't have 911 money but maybe something like a maybe like a a cayman or something yeah it's uh we're obsessed with cars too rob i uh have always been you know ever since i was a little kid and uh <laughs> funny i um i always wanted you know it, it, different cars like I always wanted the the V10 
BMW M5, right, that they made. And it's, you know, one of these crazy scenarios where they were building engines for the Sauber F1 team and they're like, hey, why not? Let's put this in a four-door saloon, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was always fascinated by that car. Uh, but a word of warning, Rob, be careful of meeting your heroes. <laughs> I haven't had the car now in 16 months. It's undergone an engine rebuild because it uh, spun a bearing and just great when they're running, but so temperamental, you know, mm -hmm. a bit like me. Maybe I'm the same, you know, I'm good when I'm running correctly, but a little bit temperamental. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back in the back in the 80s, when yeah. the dot coms thing were happening and, and people were making some crazy, stupid money. Mm. Uh, people started going after the Lamborghini Countach, like the yeah. 82, the 83 models. And I remember a couple of people I knew that bought some. And wow. the thing is, you can maybe afford the car, but good luck on affording the maintenance on that car. It's, I'll tell you one thing, those cars have gone through the roof now, value-wise. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you could, I remember, you know, it's funny we talk about car prices. I always loved the Ferrari 355, right? You know, there was a point where you could have bought a used Ferrari 355 in the UK, and it was about twenty-five to 30,000 sterling, you know, British mm -hmm. pound. I mean, now, it's, forget about it, you know. Um, but again, owning one of those cars and having to have an engine out service every so often, I mean, it's just not practical for unless you've got money to burn, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's the same with a lot of these things, you know. I feel like that all happened when these uh, these TV auctions started. Yeah. And cars started that may have been sitting in the back of a garage somewhere. Mm. All of a sudden, someone saw this car is worth a lot of money. I'm going to have this thing restored and sell it. Yeah. And now they're they're going into the hands of collectors, never to be seen again. Which yeah. is kind of a which is kind of a shame because they they mm. might have been driven years ago, but now they're going to be stored somewhere, and now they've yeah. become just basically like artwork, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to do the next one or not. Uh, but Sasha was going to ask if you could. Can you move your camera? It was just she just wanted to have a quick look at your layout, but I don't know if that's possible, Rob. I I I can try. I have a laptop, so let me see if I can do that. Well, don't worry if it's too much trouble, but it's just I'm gonna just I'm gonna just here. turn it here. Yeah, that's so, cool. So here's that's the that's the layout there. Nice, huh? Let me just pop you onto uh the bigger screen there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so that's the layout there. It's nice, isn't it? And you can see there's a garage door there, mm -hmm. and there's a garage door there. So what are the, what are the this, dimensions of the layout, uh, Rob? This is a 12 foot mm -hmm. by six foot three inch table. Yeah. Now the three inches was so that I could get the control unit inside of the borders. Yeah, yeah. And that's... so I used the online editor, mm -hmm. and I I designed the track several times. Yeah. I went back and forth to yeah. the um, there's a forum called slot forum mm -hmm. and I would show them the track. And I said, do you guys think this is going to be a good track? And they'd mm. say, they'd say, uh, yeah, but that turn's going to be too tight. You're not going to like mm -hmm. that turn. Yeah. And so then I, I, I modified it and I take it back again and I say, okay, how's this? And they go, yeah. well, that's a problem there. And so I basically kept massaging it till I got this. Yeah, that's no, cool. It's nice, nice use of space there as well. It reminds me in in ways of of ours, in that you know there's some of the larger radius curves in there, and also mm -hmm. um, you've got you've got a lot of track in there in your space, which is cool as well. Yeah, people they like coming around this corner really fast, mm. and if you've never driven this track. Uh, the first guy that we had come out here, uh, Ed, mm. and you saw that in, in one of, I didn't have it in the video, but yeah. he launched the car right off the end of that track onto the floor. <laughs> and you've got to kind of slow down a little bit, even though it's a nice yeah. sweeping turn, no, but it's, it's a, it's a fun track. It's, yeah. it's a, you, we, we like the track. I, it's kind of, it's kind of a shame that once you create a layout, you're kind of married to that layout, you know, until, 
you decide you want to change it and then all of your landscaping is pretty much useless at that point that's the yeah exactly um again we're you know we're happy with our layout and it's starting to look really good now and lovely scenery and everything and we're still at the stage but we're that's why we decided to maybe do a little test track extension down the right hand side you know separate to the main track mm -hmm. just to uh you know again it's good content and and it's good good fun for sasha to learn how to how to use our hands and build some of these uh these these things you know mm -hmm. what's your uh, background your backdrop for the track actually i'm just curious because i'm i'm going to be doing a, a model railway layout for sasha soon and i was just having to think of whether we'll actually paint our own or use a, a pre-existing so this here is a picture of a desert landscape i found yeah. on the internet somewhere mm -hmm. and the picture was about yay big and so what i do mm -hmm. and since I've, I've been a graphic designer for about 20 years yeah i decided cool. to take the landscape and then mm -hmm. replicate it yeah and then and then basically stretch it out mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. add some extra mountains in there and mm -hmm. add some other stuff so basically it's kind of just mirrored all the way across here and then i've added different things to so it doesn't look like it's mirrored and that's just a oh. vinyl banner that i had mm -hmm. made at the shop i work at yeah and I just hung it up. You know, mm. I, I don't know if there's better ways to do that, but it's just a vinyl banner. And and the reason why I decided to go great. desert desert scene is because uh, my dad's from Arizona, mm. and uh, and basically I wanted to kind of like show the. I kind of did it as a tribute to him. He yeah, uh, he I, he passed he passed back in 2021. Sorry to hear that. And so I, I just decided I wanted to do something to memorialize, you know, his yeah. growing up. Mm, yeah, no, that's nice. Nice tribute. Yeah, we're sorry to hear that, Rob. Those things are never easy, but it's it's yeah. nice to nice to have that, uh, you know, dedication to to him there in the background. Mm -hmm. You know, very cool yeah. indeed. Yeah, very nice. What um, you got another question, Sasha? We have seen. Your amazing artwork you showed on your channel can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about this well i uh when i was a kid and and we had our first computer to come out it's called the mm. apple 2c this yeah. little strange looking little computer that had a grab <laughs> handle on it um the first thing i learned how to do was take the mouse and draw cars on it even though that they were pixelated they were like little dots yeah and so I would draw these cars and I would I would print them out and uh, and I was just like fascinated because I was mm. I remember I did a Porsche 959 because I was into Porsches back then. Yeah. And um, going through high school and then going the, through college and trying to figure out, you know, I, I like doing art, but I also like doing desktop publishing. And I decided yeah. to just kind of merge those two things together. And so. Uh, it, years went by and I decided to start doing uh, printing T-shirts and doing yeah. things like that. And so I started drawing digitally or illustrating my my cars. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would I would illustrate cars just for me to look at. And then the next thing I decided, well, maybe I could, you know, do something with these. Mm. So I, I printed that little book up basically yeah. to to just show books. Oh, right nice. Yeah, I'll leave you on the larger screen there so we can see. So I had a company. I started this company back. I don't do this this stuff anymore. Okay. Um, and there's there's reasons for that, but like this is an actual beautiful. That's that's a replica of my car, that my real car that sits over oh, here. Oh, cool, isn't it? Very talented, and, Rob. Very yeah. Talented. Yeah, I, I I I enjoy this kind of stuff. Yeah. And so this is a friend's car he most of my friends they were into volkswagen so this was yeah. his car mm -hmm. and and he had several of them when you own a volkswagen you don't own one you own two or three or four <laughs> you know it's yeah. just that's what happens yeah and so i i like drawing cars mm -hmm. because to me there's a satisfaction i get when i do something that is maybe not what i'm looking at but it's something i come up with yeah and I take that idea and then draw the kind of thing I would like to have. Yeah, so, very cool. That's so awesome. Yeah. Beautiful, uh, beautiful. And do you do? Um, do you still 
draw like that i mean do you ever do you take commissions for people for example or is it just something you now do in your spare time or for your I, own i don't even do it in my spare time anymore there are, there are so many things that uh i spend my time now with mm. that there's just no time for drawing yeah um for instance because uh, i build model kits yeah um i've been collecting models for the last five years or so uh -huh. and uh and my model kit collection has grown. Okay. And I I have so many models that I have that I want to start building, and yet I haven't gotten to any of them. And yeah. so I have I have two commissions right now that I have to build, and I still have I'm still working on those. And those are a really old kit, and they uh -huh. have a lot of issues with them. I have to fix. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the drawing stuff, as much as I enjoyed it it was very time consuming and I just don't have the time right now Yeah, because I'm, I've sort of engulfed myself with all of this slot car and YouTube stuff. And so yeah. that's kind of taken over my time. It, it does take a lot of time. I mean, uh, how long were you trying to convince me Sasha to do a channel? Like at least a, probably a month. Probably. Yeah. Well, she was pretty much doing it since she started, I guess, since I started building the layout, um, yeah. And eventually I gave in and because the reason why I was resistant is because I, uh, another thing, I guess you don't, wouldn't know about me, but I am involved in the drone, uh, technology space and also did a lot of, uh, creative aerial photography, especially during my time in Australia. Mm -hmm. And I have, uh, an Instagram account for that, um, called intrepid drone and the work that you put into it you know to to grow it and everything and then it takes a lot of time but you know what it's enjoyable and it's all about fun like if it if it stopped being fun for us we wouldn't do it you know um, right but i mean already i don't know if you agree but it's been more almost more about the social aspect of it in the interest in people and friends we've made since yeah. we got involved uh, has been a lot hasn't it um mm -hmm. and that's Definitely. really you know having that alongside actually the interest and fun of doing something together racing cars you know uh creating scenery and layouts it's, mm -hmm. it's a nice a nice space and a, a fantastic community i think of people yeah i mean there's a lot of communities out there that i was involved in uh not only the car car club community um and there's the rc we have an rc community here that they drive out to the to the rocks and they go crawling up in the mountains yeah and um uh, i've wanted to get into that but that involves having to pack up your stuff and drive for an hour and do all that stuff mm -hmm. it's just so easy just to turn on the track grab the controller put a yeah. car on a track and you're having fun right now yeah, it's it's an it's an instant satisfaction, and I don't know about you, and maybe Sasha knows this too, but if you haven't driven a slot car in a few days, you get that itch. You just got to get on that track and just drive mm -hmm. something. It doesn't even matter what it is. You don't even have to race it. You just have to get it around the track a couple of times. Yeah, and there's something that happens that it's like you can forget about everything else, all the crazy stuff that's happened in the world. And mm. just concentrate on that silly little car going around the track. And I don't know, yeah. there's just something really fun about it. There is, isn't there? Yeah. Um, what do you think, Sasha? You do you agree with Rob on that? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's nice. You know, I think there was probably a, when we started doing the channel more, and you know, you start getting more subscribers and things like that, and um uh you start to spend a lot of time doing various things, and we realized recently it was like that we haven't had a race in ages because most of what we've been doing is it could be you know recording a video where sasha's doing a track test or we're doing whatever and so we got out um we got out the cars and actually uh sasha was racing elisa with the mario karts probably the worst handling vehicles you will ever put on your track right and it's funny though even if you've not been doing it for a little bit you get rusty you know it's mm -hmm. like i was the same when i went on and we're like okay we need to start we need to start uh 
continuing on the racing we always did as well as this you know fitted in around the side of it or incorporated you know into it right well i'm i'm sure you would agree with this since we've started these channels and we've sort mm. of put ourselves in these communities i find myself if if i'm not watching other people's youtube channels yeah then i'm editing my video till two o'clock in the morning uh -huh. i get about three or four hours of sleep and i got to go back to work and it's just so like it just takes over your life if and you i mean it's not maybe in a bad or good way because no. you can do what you want to do. You can stop it or slow it down, but it's fun. And I find yeah. it engaging. Yeah, it, it yeah. is. I mean, it's, it's engaging in lots of different ways. As you said, it's the creativity aspect to it. And, you know, um, like I'm very familiar with video editing and from, from my, I did a lot of uh, videography, uh, aerial videography using drones and, you know, TV stuff and various things. And, so for me, I, I like that process. Um, it's it, it engages me, you know, so I enjoy the editing side. And yeah, it takes a lot of time. And but I think, you know, overall, it's been great. I think we we really enjoy it, don't we? Yeah. And look at all the cool people we've met, you included. You know, it's I mean, you just never would encounter certain people if you didn't uh, involve yourself or or physically go to to these events. You know, mm -hmm. that's important, too. And. I think YouTube has been a great vehicle for that, though, uh, for that uh, to meeting other like-minded people. And, you know, here we are, you know, get invited over to Electric Dreams and, you know, get invited now up to the BRM 24 hours in Tacoma. You know, it's a five hour flight for us, but uh, we can't wait. You know, it's going to be cool. I, w I was going to ask you about that. What do you have planned for that event when you go there? So, um you know, Alma super keen for us to come up and we're, you know, big BRM fans as well, as you can, you've seen, you know, we've, mm -hmm. we've got eight of them now, don't we? And yeah. we've got all the new ones on pre-order. And then, you know, we do a lot of uh, things with Alan and, you know, get on very well with them. And so it's a, it's a fantastic event that, and I'm sure you saw, I just really like the format, you know, a team and you get you get this prototype car and your setup and then it's all about okay how good can we make this run here and now we don't have months alan wants to get sasha on uh, to do a bit of an hour stint as well and i'll also put in a, a a bit of time on the track otherwise i think we'll um you know try and do some live streams Mm -hmm. And again, similar to what we did, Rob, the same as you when we were over at Electric Dreams, you know, we're not going to be uh, competing in the 24 hour. Do you think you'd be able to do 24 hour? Only half of it. <laughs> yeah. So, so, Sasha, how long have you ever driven a slot car all at the same time? What's the longest mm -hmm. you've ever driven one? How many laps did you do? What's the most amount of laps you've done? Like she one. She was bedding in those Revo slots one day. Oh, yeah. And, it, and she did hundreds of laps, like hundreds of laps. I think it was like she did like 300 laps with uh, each car, and she did two <laughs> oh, yeah. cars. No, I didn't know. Was I it more? Did, no, like 100 with one car, uh, another 100 with another, and another, another 100, 100. Yeah, so it ended up hundreds of laps, you know, and that's probably the longest, I think, that uh, that you've, you've done. But... I, it, I reckon, I don't know. What about you, Rob? Have you, I've never done any racing for that length of time. I wouldn't, well, see, I think the thing was with racing is there's a different level of attention that you yeah. have to dedicate to the racing. Yeah. When it comes to just driving cars on the track, uh, when I have friends over here, we'll start racing at 10 in the morning. Yeah. And we'll probably change 20 to 30 different cars and we'll yeah. finish up at about 4 to 5 p.m. at night. Mm. And the funny thing is we both notice the next day we are just wiped out. Yeah. I don't know if it's the mental thing where you're concentrating the whole time or if it's yeah. standing up at the track. And mm. But we always find that and even we went to Electric Dreams that day. They were only open for five hours and we stayed yeah. all five. Yeah. And man the drive home was tough because it was like and joe's like because uh, after we get home to bakersfield mm -hmm. 
he still has to get in his car and drive another hour to to yeah. he lives up in the mountains in Tehachapi. Right. And and that's an area that divides Kern County and the Mojave Desert. Mm -hmm. So it it can be quite tiring and mentally draining. It's yeah. fun when you're doing it. And then mm. eventually when you're done, it's like, so I can't imagine what that would be like, even in a team aspect of having to yeah. do a 24 hour race. I, I, I want to try and, you know, I think we'll try and get a, a bit of an insight into that. I think, you know, I think it'd be fun to, to actually, you know, do a few interviews with people along the way and just to see what sort of a, a, a mental toll that takes, you know, it's, I mean, it's a long time to be concentrating and, you know, getting a rest in between. We're, we're super excited. We can't wait because we've never, we've never been or seen anything like that before. You know, obviously we've been to races before, but for this, for the 24 hour, 124 scale. Mm. Yeah. It's in a, with cars that are amazing. You have to get one of those, by the way, Rob, you really do need. I, I was staring at those cars in the case two weeks ago and I was looking at that a Barth Fiat. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, they they have a lot of really nice cars. That that two forty Z coming up, that looks pretty great too. That's I. You know what? If that was something, uh, get get yourself in a pre order on those. The newer versions of the BRMs as well with these, like the GT class uh, chassis. They're super, absolutely super cars, and uh, the details amazing. So you're going to, the problem is it's a rabbit hole. That's. I know. And that's what I'm worried about because I'm, I'm sort of getting close to the end of my storage. <laughs> and in order to use another drawer in my tool case, I'm going to have to take out my tools and then yeah. maybe have something like that. But yeah, those, they, I've, I've thought about, you know, just picking one car that I really like. Mm. And, and the size it's weird because I have no problem with RC cars, you know, 10 scale yeah. and all this. But for some reason, the size of that car scares me to put it on the track. It's just so big, you know? Yeah. But yeah. yeah, there's there's a couple of cars I have my eye on. I might end up getting one of them, probably a Golf 917. That probably would be the great car to start with. That's I If you want one of those, Rob, and I just haven't talked to Alan, they're doing another run of that car. Uh -huh. uh, and it's available to pre-order now. Alan doesn't take anything until the car is in. So like you can just, if you go on there, go to pre-order and then put a request for quote in mm -hmm. and put pre-order, then you'll be able to secure one, hopefully, because they're, they were so popular. We actually ended up getting that and the three versions of the 5.112M and they're gone now. Um, really? Because yeah, so I don't even think you can get those anymore. But the nine one seven might go the same way. So I reckon if you were gonna, if I was gonna pick a car for you, I would get that one. If, yeah. if I was you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah. they just they just look amazing. Yeah. And but like I said, I can see myself going down that rabbit hole too. <laughs> yeah oh man it's a lot of rabbit holes isn't there yeah yeah well to be honest you know you're talking about the storage thing the half the reason we decided to do this and it, it, this is basically it's not a big extension right it's probably going to be maybe three three and a half feet uh depth by nine nine feet long just mm -hmm. to the right of our layout against the wall mm -hmm. because we needed more storage space under <laughs> So then her mom, um, she turned around and said, why don't you do an extension? And we're like, okay, we will. Of course, we didn't, we didn't need that biggest four-lane polycar track because I, we just don't have room to fit those R3 curves in. Um, but we said, you know what, let's get that one anyway because you just never know. Yeah. <laughs> you, just, you just might have to build another room on your house. Well, it's it's uh, funny, you know, where it doesn't matter what size house you have, you'll always find ways to fill it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My my other interests, uh a few years ago I bought an arcade, a stand up retro arcade. And and what I my main goal was to try to incorporate all of my loves into this side of the garage. So I have like yeah. a three car space. So I had to get 
I had to get one car out to get yeah. all this stuff in here. But uh, I'd eventually like to add a pinball machine to that and really like walk in here and just see yeah. everything that I love to do. Yeah, that's just awesome. Turn off the brain and just have fun, you know? Well, it's funny you talk about the arcade. So I used to build custom arcade machines um, mm -hmm. when I was in Australia. So I spent a lot of time retor restoring original uh, CRT-based arcade games. Really? And using, actually designing then the the back end and software to, you know, have it. We've got a we've got a sit down Vulix uh, arcade machine in the slot car room actually, and. Mm -hmm. That's filled with all the classics. Sasha loves that, don't you? Yeah. What's your favorite game? Puzzle Bubble. Puzzle Bubble, and you like Bubble Bubble too, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Bubble Bubble. Yeah. I I have I have about seven thousand games on my on my arcade. Yeah. And I would have to say that my favorite game is Tron. That's my, my favorite game cool. of all time. What back end are you using uh, for that, Rob? It's it's actually not a PC based system. It's okay. an at games. It's an at games uh, system. I don't know what kind of PC Legends? boards they use. Legends. A, yes. Legends okay. Ultimate. Yeah. There's um, just so you know on that, if you're interested, uh, you can run a couple of other setups on that system, on that Legends system. Yes. I highly recommend. I've done them all, right? But the one that looks the nicest to me at the moment is the um, coin ops, the latest coin ops. They're I have beautiful. five point something coin ops. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one I use. Beautiful, and, uh, art, beautiful artwork and everything it, on there. It, it is. And the, the modding community on those are just, it's Crazy. unbelievable. You can have all kinds of stuff modded out. You can yeah. reskin them. Yeah. So, See again, too many things to enjoy, not enough time in the day to enjoy it. Too many hobbies. We're going to have to we're, we're going to have to wrap it up there, I think Rob, unfortunately. It's we're, I'm just looking at the time and I'm thinking, oh, okay, we'll, you know, we could talk for for hours. Um but yeah, we just we really want to thank you for coming on. It's been super fun chatting. Yeah, well, thank you. I was looking forward to this and and it's, yeah. at some point when I get my set up going and i can do a live stream or something like that then i'd yeah. like to put you guys on and and as i have a whole bunch of questions i'd ask you as well yeah well we'd be delighted to do that wouldn't we yeah okay folks so well, thank you thank you very much for inviting me yeah and no. this, this was really fun yeah no thank you yeah thank you so thanks for tuning in and don't forget to like and subscribe bye bye folks